Hi friends, today let's dive into the Hunger Games. A big part of this series is that the Capitol and the Rebels are at war and there's a lot of undercover Rebels who work within the Capitol. As an example of this, both Krutok and Sinna were Rebels and yet they were working quite high up within the Capitol. There's a way we can still win. But could Seneca Crane have also been an undercover rebel? Seneca Crane had been a head game maker for several years by the time the 74th Hunger Games happened. This is your third year as game maker. This means that he knows and understands how the games work, which puts a huge question mark on this conversation. Why do we have a winner? I mean, if we just wanted to intimidate the districts, why not? round up 24 of them at random and execute them all at once. It'd be a lot faster. Hope. Why would Snow feel he had to explain the reasoning behind the games to a head game maker unless he had suspicions? The most obvious act of potential rebellion from Seneca is how he handles the situation with the Nightlock Berries at the end of the games. Stop! When Katniss and Peter take the risk of playing a double suicide, Seneca immediately changes the rules back to the initial rule change and lets two victors win the games for the first time ever. Firstly, the initial rule change, allowing two tributes from the same district to win if they're the last two left, seems extremely bizarre to me. The Hunger Games have been going on for 74 years at this point, and this rule change has never happened. In fact, there's never been a rule change. So why suddenly this year do the game makers decide they want to have two victors? Ladies and gentlemen, may I present the winners of the 74th annual Hunger Games. It can't be because of Hamish's strategy of playing the star-crossed lovers trope. Though we do see Hamish and Seneca talk about this, up go back onto this conversation later on in the video. A head game maker cannot be attached to any of the tributes, nor can they be coerced by any of the mentors. No matter what any of the mentors have as a strategy, Seneca Crane has to stay impartial. Also, I'm pretty sure that in one of the other games over the 73 years up until this point, one of the mentors also tried a star-crossed lover idea because it would pull the capital towards wanting that team to win and therefore there'd be a rule change. Which we know obviously never happens, because the head game maker stays impartial. I mentioned earlier the conversation between Hamish and Seneca that happens just before the rule change is announced. What do you want? You have a lot of anger out there. Though at first, it just seems that Hamish is trying to convince Seneca to change the rules so that he can bring Peter and Katniss home, if you watch their body language and the words they actually use, it definitely seems like there's a lot going on in this conversation. We know that Hamish is a rebel and that he's part of the rebel plan to try and find a face for the rebellion so that everybody else could ally themselves behind this person. If Seneca was also a rebel and was therefore also aware of the plan, the conversation suddenly has a lot more depth. We see very early on in the conversation there is a peacekeeper standing right next to them and listening in, which explains why they have to speak in code and can't just say what they're actually thinking. Well, it seems we've already got one. I hear these rumors out of District 11. This could get away from you. Hamish explains to Seneca that by killing Katniss, all he's going to accomplish is making a martyr out of her, which is not something the Capitol wants. I don't kill her. You just create a martyr. Well, it seems we've already got one. More importantly, this is not what the Rebels need at this point. They need a leader, someone to help them. Though Coin does plan on making Katniss a martyr later on in the Rebellion, at this point they need someone to stand for them and to help them fight. By using the word martyr, which is a typical word in like war type situations, Hamish can be sure that Seneca is aware he is talking about this potential war. Hamish then mentions that he's aware of what's happening in District 11. Now, we do see Seneca react to the uprisings in District 11, and he doesn't react how someone from the capital should be reacting. Someone who is high up in the capital and who is linked to why these uprisings are starting would be scared, confused, and definitely agitated. But look at how Seneca Crane reacts. He's not scared or agitated. He's definitely shocked though, but a rebel would be shocked to see that their plan has actually started to work. Uprisings are starting to happen. So when Hamish says to Seneca that he knows there's uprisings happening, 
This tells Seneca that Hamish believes Katniss could be their leader. Seems we've already got one. I hear these rumors out of District 11. This could get away from you. Hamish goes on to say, this could get away from you. Obviously, remember, they are being listened to and watched right now, so they can't just be upright and upfront with everything they want to say. They have to speak in a sort of code. The you that Hamish is referencing is not Seneca Crane himself, but what Seneca Crane is supposed to represent, i.e. the capital. Hamish wants to make sure that Seneca understands he's not talking about the people of the capital, he's talking about District 13. You can see that Seneca is obviously uncomfortable with this conversation, and that's likely due to the fact that they are being listened to right now, and if anything slips, they could both be murdered for it. One of the last things that Hamish says is, if you can't scare them, give them something to root for. If you can't scare them, give them something to root for. At this point, as a rebel, he's obviously not talking about scaring people into submission. What he's saying is that scaring the rebels isn't going to rally them together, but giving them something to root for or to fight for will. The last exchange that they have has Hamish ending on young love, and at this point there's very intense eye contact throughout the whole exchange. Such as? Young love. This is when Hamish is telling Seneca he needs to have both Peter and Katniss come out of the arena alive. Why is this if they saw that the uprisings happened due to Katniss and what she did for Rue? Well, unlike Katniss, Peter is an amazing speaker and can definitely rally people to his cause. By having both Peter and Katniss alive, the rebels now have a choice as to which leader they would rather have. They can have the speaker, the boy who can move people to action with his words, or they can have the fighter, the girl who will lead people into battle. And now, if that conversation doesn't convince you that Seneca is most likely a rebel, there's also the conversation he has immediately after this one with President Snow. Seneca's face throughout this conversation shows that he's not on the same page as Snow, and he doesn't agree with him. So you like an underdog. Everyone likes an underdog. I don't. When they disagree as to whether an underdog is a good thing, Seneca's face shows that he feels annoyed with himself because he got the answer wrong. Later on in the conversation, Seneca's face doesn't just tell us that they're on different pages at this point, he's actually just not interested in the conversation anymore. Lots of underdogs. Lots of coal, too. Row crops, minerals, things we need. There are lots of underdogs. He's made up his mind, and nothing Snow says is going to change that. At the end of their conversation, Snow very obviously threatens Seneca. I like you. Be careful. Seneca is very obviously uncomfortable and scared, but he's also determined. This conversation tells us that Snow has figured out that Seneca Crane is working against him, and he's already planned to kill him no matter what happens next. Even Seneca's suicide at the end screams of rebellion. Snow leaves Seneca locked in a room with nothing but some nightlock berries in a bowl, which means that Seneca is going to have to eat them and have to kill himself. But he doesn't. Seneca decides instead that, yeah, he will kill himself, but on his own terms, and he hangs himself instead. Seneca decided to quit breathing. He refuses to die in the way that Snow told him to. He will work against Snow to his very last breath. What do you think? Do you think that Seneca was a rebel, or was he just a dumb game maker? Please tell me in the comment section down below. And until next time, happy bubbles! If you want to see any of my other videos, you can click on the box on the left to find out why the game makers are so boring, or you can click on the box on the right to find out about District 13's failed rebellions. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos!